Good evening and welcome to Evening Worship from St Peter's Shipley Online. Uh, this week is the fifth Sunday after Trinity and we have come to the last uh, evening in our series uh, looking at the Lord's Prayer. And so later in our service, John is going to be speaking about the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours and what that means for us as Christians. So as we start in worship together, let's just be silent for a moment and then we'll pray. The Lord who calls us is with us as we meet. The God who guides us reveals to us the root. The God who feeds us supplies us with his truth. The God who loves us inspires us as we speak. For the world in which we walk, create a God, we give our thanks. For footsteps to follow, living God, we give our thanks. For people encountered, loving God, we give our thanks. For blessings offered, caring God, we give our thanks. For blessings received, gracious God, we give our thanks. For the world in which we walk, Creator God, we give our thanks. to our prayers of confession. 
to the time for bringing before God those things which we have done this week that we should not have. So let's take a moment of quiet and bring those things to mind and then we'll join together in prayer before God. Lead us to a mountain top within our daily lives, a sacred space where life takes on a different pace. For we are too busy, Lord, and fail to hear your call. We pray together. Lord, you have given us each other that through this community of faith, others might be drawn to you. Forgive us when through lack of love, these lives do not reflect your grace and our words bring anything but peace. May this place and all the places we find ourselves tonight bring a blessing to all who enter and this people become the face of Christ to all that they see today and always. Amen. If we in humility will confess our sins in the quietness of our hearts or in the company of the faithful, God's love and mercy bring forgiveness. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Micah. The Lord says, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, you are one of the smallest towns in Judah, and out of you I will bring a ruler for Israel, whose family line goes back to ancient times. So the Lord will abandon his people to their enemies until the woman who is to give birth has her son. Then those Israelites who are in exile will be reunited with their own people. When he comes, he will rule his people with the strength that comes from the Lord and with the majesty of the Lord God himself. His people will live in safety because people all over the earth will acknowledge his greatness and he will bring peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading is from John chapter 1 starting to read at verse 6. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light, the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He comes after me, he has surpassed me, because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace we have all received one blessing after another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We're coming to the end of our series on the Lord's Prayer. And we come to those words which are the traditional ending of the prayer in our liturgy. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. If you look at Matthew 6, where uh, Jesus uh, first teaches his disciples the Lord's Prayer in your Bible, you may not find those words there at all. The prayer seems to come to an end with the words, deliver us from evil. 
Um, and <clears throat> yet, uh, we're told by many theologians that uh, it's very unlikely that the prayer Jesus taught his disciples ended at that point, deliver us from evil. Usually, in the way that Jews prayed in those days, there would have been some uh, acknowledgement of giving glory to God at the end of the prayer. And something like this would have been said uh, as part of uh, the, the liturgical prayers uh, with which Jews would have been very familiar. So um, it's not a case of uh, these words creeping in illegally. Uh, something like that was probably there in the original. So what does <clears throat> this mean? The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Well, the word kingdom doesn't so much mean a geographical area. Um, it's more an abstract noun, which means kingship, uh, the area where the king's rule is law. You can perhaps think of it as authority. And so we're saying all authority, Lord, is yours. The power, well, the ability, uh, the, uh, the getting things done, all power is God's. And the glory, uh, I suppose that I like to think of that in terms of the phrase, the wow factor. Does God have the wow factor? Well, I think he certainly does. And so you could say we're uh, saying to God that all authority, all ability, all the wow factor are yours, Lord, not just now, but forever and into eternity. But now that we've worked that out, we have to think to ourselves, well, <clears throat> what are we actually praying when we get to this bit of the prayer? Have we actually got all of the business stuff done by this stage and we're just tacking on a kind of doxology at the end, which doesn't really mean very much. And I don't think that that's the case at all. This is one of those points where we have to remember that we're probably praying something fairly explosive, uh, something uh, which actually focuses uh, our prayers on something really very important. And that if we knew what we were praying, we'd perhaps take it a great deal more seriously than we often do when we get to this point in the prayer. We're acknowledging in these words <clears throat> that authority, ability, power, glory, however we want to say it, all these things are God's and not ours. And this is really quite important because it comes down to a very modern issue, which is the issue of control. Many Christians have experienced an issue of, of struggling to gain control over their lives. We like to be in control of things. And um, it's in many ways good for our mental health that we are. Uh, it is sadly the case that there are a great many people who have never been able to fully control their lives in a way that's good for their mental health. And many Christians have spent many years getting to that place of feeling that they're sufficiently in control uh, to actually uh, begin to serve God and to be able to offer him their lives as they really want to. But of course, <clears throat> the con key confession that we make when we become Christians is that Jesus is Lord. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. This is something which Christians are, are encouraged to truly mean. And that's a real challenge to all of us because uh, the taking of control that should be God's is in fact, what lies at the heart of sin. It was uh, the story of the Garden of Eden, really, deciding that they needed to be in control, really, and that God's control was not enough for them. 
which led to all the horrific consequences that we know so much about. And the challenge that God brings us is uh, to ask us about that place at the centre of our hearts and lives where there is a kind of throne, where uh, we put ourselves on the throne to gain control of our lives, but God says, I want to be in control of that now. I want you to give me that place in your heart so that I can be the king there, so that I can guide and direct your life, so that I can be the one who leads you um, and who leads you properly. We've heard in one of our readings tonight about God uh, saying that he will lead his flock like a shepherd. He's indeed going to be the king, but a king who is compassionate and caring, who can give us the right kind of leadership. Although God is called a king, he is not in any sense a tyrant. And <clears throat> he has all of the, the best attributes of leadership, which human leaders find it so hard to replicate. The challenge is, will we give that God that place on the throne of our lives? And will we offer him that often hard-won control and confess that Jesus is Lord? Now, this is the challenge that we face every time we get to this point in the Lord's Prayer, which is why it is such a serious piece of praying right at the end of the prayer, that we want to say to God, yours, Lord, is the kingdom, the authority. I give to you the authority to lead and control my life, to be my king, that king who uh, feeds his flock like a shepherd. Yours is the power. Yours is the ability. I want to recognise that uh, the natural gifts and talents I have need to be redeemed and used for the kingdom. I want to be led by you. And Yours is the wow factor. Everything that you do, God, is great, and you deserve the praise, the glory, the greatness for it, and not me. So <clears throat> this is a very far-reaching prayer that we need to think about very hard. And so as we come to the end of the prayer, we're saying to God, we recognise that all these things truly belong to you. And we are not going to be people who control our own lives and go our own way. We want you to be the king who leads us to pastures and to springs of living water. So we've come to the end of our studies on the Lord's Prayer. And we've been challenged, I think, every week about the issue of boldness, to actually realise that God wants to share the work of his kingdom with us and we can ask for these great things because of all that Jesus has done. But also we've been challenged to expect answers to these things. And perhaps as we continue to pray the Lord's Prayer, many of us using it every day in our private worship as well as our public worship. We could do a lot worse than just to pause for a moment as we say it slowly, perhaps with others or on our own, just to reflect on what we really are praying for in these words which we know by heart and which are so well known. That God is in the business of wanting to uh, bring his kingdom in the world and that we have the privilege of sharing in that task with him and so let us in our prayers learn to be bold and to ask god for the great things that he encourages us to ask for and let us also expect him to answer our prayers let us pray lord god our heavenly father we thank you that you choose to share the work of your kingdom with us and that we have a part in that through prayer. 
We pray that you will keep us faithful to our calling and that we will recognize uh, your authority and your power. And we pray that as we confess that Jesus is Lord, we may see your kingdom growing and many more people sharing in that confession with us and coming to know the joy of eternal life. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. this week we're going to be thinking about one of the parables from Luke's gospel the parable of the persistent widow and I'm grateful to Andy Thorby for reminding us of the importance of this story this week the persistent widow is a parable that Jesus tells to remind people of the fact that it is really important to always pray and never give up sometimes we can feel as though we've prayed for things for a long time and somehow we're not getting anywhere but things happen in God's time 
God always wants to hear our prayers over and over and over again. The prayers of the faithful are so important to God. During our intercessions this evening, you're going to see some words and hear some music and there'll be some space um, for you to pray your own prayers as we think about being persistent and never giving up on prayer for people and things and the world and the church and the things that concern us. The song that you're going to hear is an African song, a song called Bambalela. But Bambalela, the English bit of the song, the words are never give up, never give up, never give up praying, never give up hoping, never give up remembering that there is a faithful God who longs to hear and to answer our prayers. So let's pray together. Bambalela. Bambalela, oh Bambalela, Bambalela, Bamba, 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 oh Bamba, Bambalela. together the collect the special prayer for today the fifth Sunday after Trinity almighty and everlasting God by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. There is strength within the soul There is beauty in our tears You meet us in our morning With a love that costs our fear You are working in our waiting Sanctifying us 
exuberant God who adores us, carefree creator of the far lands. Fire us with the freedom of your blistering heart. Detonate us and make us dangerous for you, unruly disciples impatient with the narrow and the drab. Unreachable God, breathing big in undiscovered galaxies, Make us wild and tender for you, eager with love, here on your pearl, earth. We pray together. Abide with us, Lord, for it is toward the evening and the day is far spent. Abide with us and with your whole church. Abide with us in the evening of the day in the evening of life, in the evening of the world. Abide with us in your grace and mercy, 
in your holy word and sacrament, in your comfort and your blessing. Abide with us in the night of distress and fear, in the night of doubt and temptation, in the night of bitter death, when these shall overtake us. Abide with us and all your faithful ones, O Lord, in time and in eternity. Amen. The peace and the power and the presence of the risen Lord be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. <laughs>